My grandfather painted and he would always send us paintings and this was my refuge. I wanted to be a painter from the time I was two. I was never conflicted. Ever since I was a little kid, I've found color the next best thing to dessert. <laughs> I mean, when I see color kits and color, like my heart starts skipping beats. Mood, everything changes with color. I love to paint rooms red, they're hot pinks. And, push the envelope. I had a teacher in school that would hold up two colors and say, these colors, you can't use them together, they make you ill, so that's my go-to colors, you know. There aren't enough colors made for me. I've often invented colors. They just weren't out there until I invented them. And I like really saturated color, which is often hard to find, and I love to see how far I can go. The form of the rabbit has always fascinated me. You think of Dürer's etching of the rabbit, game paintings for all of French history, and they came through me very easily and gesturally and turned into my morning warm-up painting. Then I started hanging them and they became the rabbit walls, which I love hanging them in groups of a hundred. Rabbits have a voice. I work with channelers and mystics a lot, and the rabbit family speaks to me and tells me that my rabbits would take me places that nothing else would. And it's always thrilling when you see rabbits. They're such adorable creatures. I mean, rabbits are welcome. I've never been plagued with an unwanted number of them. Somehow, maybe the essence of who I am as an artist, because of the simplicity of the form, is allowed to emerge stronger, not struggling with subject matter in that case, which can be limiting, has just led to a certain harnessing of my focus and giving me breath of strength for my gestures. You know, they're like blades of grass or snowflakes or leaves of trees. They're all completely different. They're never the same. And we keep adding new materials. I'm using diamond dust and metallics. And I'm doing resins now with bunnies are emerging in the glass works and other bigger sculptural forms. I like to paint kind of my glue that holds me together. 50 years of a one brush deal, you know. So it's kind of like coming out of isolation into the furnace, so to speak. Glass making is very complicated and it's ever changing. And we're using a lot of iridescence and transparent, so light shooting off everywhere. And it has an uplifting quality. It's like being in a crystal cave or something. I think that's why it's so popular. It makes people feel great. When I have to like tweak ears with utensils that I'm new at, it's exciting and it's a rarefied thing. I like that. I think this is hitting me at the perfect moment in my life. And I feel so amazed that I have an opportunity to do something like work in glass. I'm very in awe of it. I haven't been to Seattle since 1969 when I graduated from high school and I went off to Europe and 50 years later I'm back and it's amazing. This enormous production of what we've talked about, met about, dreamed about, it's really bigger than life for me to find such an organized, receptive, caring group. Very rare to have such a great team of people all working together to make this go forward and speaking of goals and ideals so i'm thrilled about it and overwhelmed by the potential and where this could go i mean this may be lifetimes of creative projects i feel like i'm here for a reason ended up in school knowing that i was going to be an artist across the river here but somehow this is a reunion it's a re 
connection to some energy that I wasn't fully aware of when I was 15. Profoundly exciting and a strange reunion with this part of the world. You know, just out of nowhere, this hit me. Very exciting.